Okay, this is Tennessee end of course uh, practice test for Algebra 1. This is question number 35. If you saw the video for question number 34, I changed venues again, but you might hear children talking in the background because I'm actually at my kitchen table uh, or dining room table. So sorry if you can't understand what's going on, but I'll try to make this as easy as possible. This question asks me to find which order pair represents the solution for the system of equations. There's about four ways we can do this. Um, we can convert them all into, uh, move them all into slope-intercept form or y equals form. So I can uh, take the 2 plus 5x plus 7.5y equals 75 and just try to get this y by itself. The reason we want to do that is so we can graph, the, uh, graph this one and then graph the other one. The point where they intersect each other uh, will be the solution set. So I need to get rid of the 25x on this side, so I need to eliminate it, and then I need to, since I subtracted 2.5x on this side of the line, I have to do it over here as well. It's a good idea to draw the line, uh, just because it allows me the opportunity to tell, to make sure that I've done something on both sides of the uh, equation. Now I need to get rid of time 7.5, so I'm just going to divide. This becomes y. Negative uh, 2.5 divided by 7.5 should be negative uh, one-third. I'm just checking to make sure that my instincts are correct. So you get this. And if you use a TI-84, you can actually check it as a fraction by hitting the alpha button, in case you didn't know. Going up to F1 there, so L and then y equals. And then I'm going to change it. Uh, this will change fraction decimal. It's got the FD on there, so I hit enter. It's the fourth one. Yeah, negative one-third. So this is y equals negative one-third x. And then 75 divided by 7.5 is just 10. So plus 10. So that's the first one. The second one says x plus y is equal to 12. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides, try to get y by itself. Negative x plus 12. Now I can graph both of these and see if there is an intersection. So I'm going to go into y equals, type in uh, negative, uh, and I'm going to actually put it in as a fraction. So I'm going to go up here and go to the fraction button, which is the ND thing. Negative one-third x plus 10. And on the second one, I'm going to go down and just type in negative x plus 12. And graph them. So I've got my lines coming out. And my intersection looks to be like right in here. I can actually find the intersection. I'm going to look in a table just because that's what I feel like doing right now and look for a point where they're both the same. You see here, I'm going to raise it up just a little bit, that when x is 3, y is 9. So um, I'm looking for the answer to be 3 and 9, which actually is the answer to this question. I could also, if I don't like that method, um, use two or three other methods. Uh, you can use substitution, which is where I would... Uh, where I transferred this y equals negative x plus 12, I could plug it back into this equation in this form. But instead of doing 7.5y, I put this in place of y because I've just shown that they're of the same value. And then I'll do, it's basically like solving an equation at this point. Do the distributive property. So 90. And that equals 75. Uh, combine like terms because these two are alike, so I get negative uh, 5x plus 90 equals 75. I need to get rid of this plus 90, so I'm going to subtract 90. Should give me uh, negative 15. And bring down my negative 5x. Uh, this says times negative 5, so to eliminate that times negative 5, I'm going to divide. Because this says it's five groups of x, but I need to figure out how many are in each group, so I'm going to break it into five parts, which is what divide says that I'm going to. So this says my x is equal to 3. Now that I know that the x is equal to 3, I can go back up to this equation and plug in that equal to 3 component. I'm just plugging this x in where the, y, or where the x is in this problem, and it says y is equal to negative 3 plus 12. So y is equal to 9. So I have my 3 and 9, just like I had before. If you don't like that method, you can compare them out and do elimination. We want to, I guess, adjust for all types here. If 
we can do elimination. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to get rid of 2.5x, so I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 2.5. So it becomes 2. Point. I'm rewriting the top one first is what I'm about to do. So the new one here will be 2.5 times x plus 2.5 times y times 2.5 times 12, which is 30. Then I just subtract this all out. These cancel out. I get uh, 7.5 minus 2.5, which gives me 5y. 75 minus 30 gives me 45. I divide by 5. So y equals 9, which is what I predicted. I plug that y back in up here. Uh, 9 plus 3 gives me 12, so that works as well. Now, if you don't want to do any of that, you don't want to graph it, you don't want to do all this extra work, let's use the fact that this is a multiple choice question. Kind of use that against the system uh, to our advantage. Now, 2.5x plus 7.5y should equal 75. Otherwise, this doesn't make any sense. The whole point of math is trying to figure out truth, right? So we're going to prove this. Uh, 2.5. I'm going to try plugging in 3 for my x. For my y, I'm going to try plugging in my 9 and see if it gives me 75. So I'm just going to rewrite it. Look, it's 75, and that's exactly what it's supposed to be. If I plug those two numbers in again and it makes the bottom one true, it's done. So where x plus it's 3, plus 4y is it's 9, equals 12. 3 plus 9 is 12. So that works. So just plug in your answer choices. Like if you had tried um, 9 and 3 into this one, it would have worked fine. So with 10 and 2. But it doesn't work up here. Let's Just to prove that to be true, I'm going to flip the uh, y around to make it 9. Uh, should be three here. See, it doesn't give you 75 like it's supposed to. So you know it's not this one. This one and this one won't work either. So just plug in your values for X and Y, you get the answer. No big deal.